Greetings YouTube and welcome back to another vlog. Sorry I've not uploaded anything for over a week. That's because I've been really busy. But anyway I've got some uh, stuff to talk about in this uh, edition. So let's begin. So uh, last Monday I was a bit fed up of uh, staying at home. I was fed up of work and all that lot. So I decided that... Uh, It'd be a good idea to go go out on a day to Southport. Yeah, the weather was nice. And uh, even though it was bank holiday, I was expecting it to be really, really busy. But as it turned out, it was dead quiet. Yeah, because at that point, you could tell that some a lot of people were probably on their holidays. They were probably, I don't know, they were probably going to Wales or Blackpool or wherever. Because it was absolutely quiet. He was, I was expecting it to be chock a block, but honestly, it wasn't to be. And you know what? I had, it wasn't too bad, but because of what's been going on, a lot of shops haven't been opened. So yeah, it was that quiet that you could hear a pin drop. And yeah, a lot of restaurants were shut as well. As a result, yeah. Because of what's been going on in the world and all that. So places have unfortunately shut their doors for good. And some have shut it down on certain days. Because they didn't, because they don't think they'd be making enough money. So it won't be worth the costs. So yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, I was about to go to a certain fish and chip uh, shop in Southport. Uh, it's one of the most famous ones, not just in Southport, but in the United Kingdom called the Swan. And unfortunately, that one wasn't, that was a, that was shot. Well, shot on that particular bank holiday Monday. Usually it, usually it's open during that time, but because of what's been going on, they decided to keep the door shut for that day because they didn't think they'd be making enough money. Yeah, because uh, I was talking to one of the people there and he said, oh yeah, yeah, it's closed during the bank holiday, which I thought was odd because usually it's open then. Yeah, so uh, we tried to go to, we found another fish and chips uh, place. I just found these fish and chips, but I don't know. I, I had, a, had a look in there. I was, I went into some fish place. Um, I was having a look on the menu, but I was, I was sat right, not too far from the kitchen, and I could see the fish. Ah, uh, and the, the fish didn't look fresh at all. It looked like a, it looked like it'd been in the freezer for like a couple of days. And I seen, I seen the way it looked. It, it put me off, and I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna eat from there. If the, if the fish doesn't look nice, then I won't eat it. Sure, it may taste nice, but I don't know. The color of the fish didn't look right. It looked rather grey. And I seen what other people were eating, and I thought, you know what? I thought, you know what? I'm I'm not getting anything from there. Food looks horrible. And the people who were eating the food, well, well, I think there was about two people in there at most. Yeah, you know, the fish looked absolutely horrible. I don't know why. I'm about to sneeze. In fact, I've got one of them sneezes that is just building up. <coughs> Bless me. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to sneeze on stream, but here we are. But yeah, I, I know I was, I'd say I was ordering, but when I was looking at fish, it put me off. So I decided um, I didn't fancy eating at that restaurant. Yeah, cause I know where some person who served me said that, have you decided anything? I'd, and I, 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 I politely told him that um, I, I, I just didn't like the look of the food. I, I was polite about it. They, they were friendly and they understood, which was good. I was expecting, uh, I don't know, I was expecting a different approach. I was expecting a different response. But yeah, I, I decided to go somewhere else to eat. Yeah, because there wasn't that many places open. I just, I just went to KFC. I was hungry, just wanted 
get something down my neck as soon as possible because I hadn't eaten for quite a few hours. Yeah. But yeah, I had, a, I had a KFC, even though originally I was going to have fish and chips, but because of the situation, I I couldn't quite do it. Yeah, I'm sure there was other fish and chips uh, restaurants. I'm sure there was other chippies, but I don't know. I just, I, I, I was too hungry to care at that point. Yeah, but yeah, I had the KFC, enjoyed it, but it wasn't what, but that's not why I come to the seaside for, that's not why I come to Southport. If I want to go to a seaside town, I want fish and chips. And preferably, I'd like my fish and chips to be cooked right and uh, look right and taste right. Because, I mean, I've had a few uh, fishes from some places in the past and uh, some have unfortunately given me a dodgy tummy. And uh, if I had uh, one, one chippy one time in my uh, local town, yeah. Not not to grow sure anything. It, it gave me it gave me the fucking trots. It gave it gave me the trots. I couldn't stop couldn't stop going to the toilet for days, dear God. Yeah, my stomach really hurt. But as I say, lesson learned I I try and look for chippies that have got good re great reviews and all that lot. Yeah. But whilst I was in Southport, enough about food, um in a charity shop, I found two Sega Mega Drive games. And normally, uh, you don't find much. Normally, it's just football games, um, DVDs, books, you name it. But yeah, but I found two Mega Drive games. One of them, believe it or not, is a Genesis title. Yeah, that's right, Genesis. I don't know why. But yeah. But yeah, I'll show you the games anyway. So yeah, the first game that I picked up, uh, that well, the first game that I saw was uh, Lemmings. I'm sure everyone knows what Lemmings is. Absolute classic game. Absolute classic uh, you know, puzzle game where you have to like control the Lemmings. And yeah, they all have different abilities. Like um, yeah, they can like they can dig holes, like dig walls, or create bridges. And yeah, I don't know. There's like each and every one of them have a different uh, attributes, and you have to use as well. You have to use the right amount of lemmings, just in case. Uh, just in case uh, you struggle in the later levels, which yeah, this game is really really difficult. But yeah, in the earlier levels, I suggest you try and use as less. Try not go crazy with all the lemmings. You have to be very careful on how you beat a level. Because there is also a strict timer as well. Yeah, lemmings was originally on the Amiga in 91. And then this Mega Drive version, or Genesis, was 1982. But yeah, is this the best version of lemmings? No, that would probably have to be on the Amiga. But... In terms of music, this one has uh, this has the best soundtrack of the lot. Honestly, it's no surprise because uh, Sunsoft uh, ported this version. Yeah, as it says at the top there, and the uh, Cyanosis because they're the people who originally made this game. Yeah, it's an absolute classic. Yeah. Games like this is the reason why I enjoy games like Worms, though. In fact, I've not played Worms in a long time. Do I still have it on my PlayStation 1? I've been playing, I've played that game so much as a kid. I've played Lemmings quite a bit, but I've never gone close to beating it because uh, I'm not the best at video games. But anyway, it, it has uh, the instruction manual in there, like so. Yeah, the fact that I found this in the charity shop is just... Uh, Insane. Yeah. And another game, a game that I had many, many years ago. Well, I won't say it's a game because it's a, it has a compilation of three games. And to be honest with you, there was only one game I really played out of them. There was one game I played the most out of these three. And that is of course uh, we got Mega Games 1. Yeah, the games include uh, Super Hang On, Columns, 
and World Cup Italia. And uh, I think you know what the best game is of the lot. That's right, uh, Super Hang On. Yeah, I, I've, I'm pretty sure I played the arcade cabinet of this in, uh, in Wales when I was a kid. It was either Wales or it might have even been Southport of Super Hang On. Yeah, absolutely quality uh, bike racing game. And the, the Mega Drive one, I'd, I'd actually argue it's even better. I would, I mean, graphically it's not going to look quite as good as the arcade one, but the soundtrack is just absolutely superb, honestly. If you've not heard the soundtrack for Super Hang On, then I think you should. Absolutely great songs. Yeah, my my two in partic my two absolute favourite tunes in the game, a winning run, and uh, outrider crisis. I think most people prefer outrider crisis, but yeah, the music on that is absolutely stunning. Um, it has columns though, which I don't mind it, but it's not really my favourite puzzle game. If I'm being honest with you, if I want to play something puzzle related, I'd rather play Tetris. I would. I prefer Tetris any day. Now, some people would actually argue that Columns is better, but I don't know. I like Columns, but it's not one of those ones I could play for like too long. I get a bit bored after 10 minutes, whereas Tetris, you can absolutely, you can just play that for hours. In fact, when we, if I've, if I've got Tetris on the Game Boy anyway, that game the whole family played. In fact, I think everyone who had the Game Boy had Tetris. And I'm pretty sure they made the whole family play it because, yeah, it's one of the most addictive puzzle games ever made. I know there's other versions of Tetris, but to me, the one on the Game Boy is the absolute best. But anyway, the third and final game is uh, World Cup Italia 90. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have a little bit of a soft spot for it because it was one of the very first football games I ever played. I have a bit of a soft spot for it. But honestly, in terms of football games go, it isn't very good at all. But it's one of those ones that, you know the game is shit, but there's just something about it that makes you come back to it more and more. I don't know how to describe it. I know what's her name, uh, Kim Justice mentioned this when she did the, uh, when she was doing like the Mega Drive football games. She said, she said that, uh, it's a crap football game. It's a crap football game. Yeah, it's one you just keep coming to when you're bored and got nothing else to play. But yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, this one doesn't have the instruction manual, but to be honest with you, I'm not I'm not really fussed about that. I'm not really I'm not one of those uh, collectors who expect everything to be in minty fresh condition and all dollar and expecting to pay top dollar. I'm not that kind of person. If it's a game that interests me, regardless of the condition, I will buy it. I mean, of course, I don't want the game to look absolutely battered or anything like that. If the condition is good enough for me, I will buy it. I don't know, that will just absolutely piss the collectors off. But I'm not a, I'm not a full-on collector. I'm not a hardcore collector or anything like that. Not my thing. I know some people... Uh, if... I, uh, I know some people are hardcore collectors and fair play to them, but my god, they must have deep pockets if they're able to uh, afford some of those games because, dear me, you need a mortgage. Yeah, I know there's some games on the Mega Drive which are just absolutely ridiculously expensive, like uh, Castlevania, the new generation, even though the American one is uh, it's called Bloodlines. But yeah, you, you're looking at 200 quid. I'm not sure how much a loose cart is, but let's be honest with you, it's not what I'm willing to pay. But I know you could either, we could get like reproduction copies, you get repo cards. So I'm not a fan of repos if I'm being honest with you. For, for me, either I own the original copy or emulate it, because I don't know. Because I don't know how owning something that. Owning a repro, I don't know, You just it just doesn't feel authentic to me. I know it's the same game and it runs well, but I don't know. There's just something about it. Perhaps I'm a little fussy. 
I think we're all a bit fussy when it comes to uh, certain games. But I'll tell you what absolutely annoys me. And I think I, I mentioned this on a live stream that I did a couple of years ago. That people get uptight about platinum disc games. Like the ones for the PlayStation 1, PS2, whatever. Even, or, or the greatest hits, like what they have in America. But yeah, people are getting annoyed. Oh yeah, it's not a black lay. It's not a black label. Oh, it doesn't match. Does it matter? It's the same game. It plays the same as the other version. However, there is one game I do know where the Platinum Edition, the Platinum version, has extra features that a normal disc, the, the Black Label one doesn't, and that is V-Rally. The Black Label copy of V-Rally does not support analog, and, uh, and it doesn't have a, a, an extra car in it, which is a Toyota Corolla. But yeah, if you own the Platinum copy, not only do you get analog control, even DualShock, would you believe? You also get an extra car. I know people are saying, oh yeah, well, you, you say it really, is that point? They could have just put in the original, but I don't know, it is what it is. But yeah, that's one of the few occasions where a Platinum disc game is better than the original. I honestly don't know. I don't know why some people would prefer to have a black label over uh, a platinum. Yeah, most of my PS1 games and PS2 games are the black label ones, but I've got a few platinum ones, and that's fine by me. I, d I don't care if it looks like looks like a soft thumb, looks like it's sticking out, but it's fine. It's fine. If the game works, that's all that matters. End of story. But anyway, uh, what else shall we talk about? Yeah, the football. Oh my god, what the hell has been going on? What the hell has been going on with the VAR? But the thing is, it's not the VAR that's the problem. It's the incompetent fools who, he, who don't even know how to use the bloody thing. And the, the referees are absolutely clueless. Yeah, referees in other countries, for the most part, are unbiased. They, they show no favourites. And uh, if you if you mess around, they will they will give you the correct uh, they will give you the correct decision, like a red card or a yellow card. But yeah, absolute some absolutely disgraceful uh, refereeing this week. Yeah. The refereeing in the Liverpool game was all right, even though I think Ever Everton should have beaten us. We were, I thought we were absolutely rubbish again. I know, I know we were struggling with our midfield, but we shouldn't be using that as an excuse because those midfielders, we we should be more than capable of beating Everton. But yeah, we absolutely we struggled against them, and. Uh, we were lucky it finished nil nil because it could have been about one or two to Everton because uh, let's be honest with you, Liverpool haven't started off the season particularly well. I know last week we we absolutely hammered Bournemouth. We put nine past them. We beat them nine nil, which of course is Liverpool's uh, biggest uh, biggest home win, biggest league win since nineteen eighty nine when we beat Crystal Palace with the same score. But yeah, that Everton game. I don't know. I was, uh, I was, I had a feeling we wouldn't lose to Everton, but the way we've been playing, I was, I was worried. I was really, really, really worried. I'm sorry. I'm sounding like Jonathan Ross and Kurt and getting me W's and R's mixed up. Then, yeah. But yeah, Everton should have beaten us. We were very lucky not to have lost that. Yeah. But yeah, but the other games like yeah Chelsea and West Ham United, all I can say to West Ham is that, all I can say to West Ham and the fans is, I feel very sorry for you. Your team should have gotten a point against Chelsea, but of course they got robbed by VAR because the ref, uh, the referees and the other and the officials, they're probably wearing Chelsea shirts underneath because the West Ham, I mean West Ham were one 0 up. Chelsea pulled it back to 1-1, then he made it 2-1, 
then West Ham should have made it 2-2, but it, it was 2-2, but the referee and the, the, the officials decided to rule it off because apparently there was a foul on Mendy, even though there was no foul on him whatsoever. Yeah, what happened was uh, Burnley, uh, not Burnley, West Ham, sorry, because uh, West Ham and Burnley were the same colour kids. I often get them mixed up. Anyway, West Ham had a perfectly allowable goal disallowed because uh, Mendy decided to feign an injury whilst uh, West Ham had got the ball in there. He was fine. The ball had gone in, and then Mendy was like, "Ow!" He was he was like rolling on the floor, even though no one had touched him. And the David Moyes, the West Ham manager, was absolutely scathing. He he said that the decision against West Ham was absolutely scandalous. It bloody was. It was. Yeah, they were robbed of a well-deserved goal, and they should have got a point. But yeah. I know it was right, and yeah, even even Chelsea fans, even the, the genuine ones, thought that um, West Ham should have uh, beaten them or at least gotten the points because even they admit that they were lucky. But yeah, it, it gets better. Yeah, the Chelsea manager, uh, Thomas Tuchel, the German Niles Crane, guess what? He had the, he had the absolute cheek. The absolute nerve to say that, oh yeah, it was a foul. There was no foul though. Mendy was just making an injury up. He was just making it up. And he said, oh yeah, well, it's a foul. It's not a foul. He, he was saying it without smiling. Come on, Thomas, you know it wasn't a foul. You know that. You're just absolutely deluded. I'm sorry. If if you're del if you're that deluded, you just... Just, just leave, just leave Chelsea for God's sake. There is nothing wrong with being honest, and if you haven't got the balls to be honest, just get out. Yeah, I can't just, I can't stand dishonest uh, human beings. Just be honest and uh, take, and accept that your team didn't deserve to win, which you, well, you fully well, he fully well knew, Chelsea didn't deserve to win. But he had the delusion to say that West Ham had fouled the play, even though they clearly hadn't. And then another stupid decision was uh, it was Aston Villa versus Man City. And yet Man City did not play at all well against them. The game finished one all, though it should have been 2-1 to Aston Villa because Philippe Coutinho, yeah, the former Liverpool player, yeah, he, he scored a screamer. But yeah, and then the, the ref and the linesman, he blew the whistle as soon as he went shot. Yeah, they just assumed that he was in an offside position when clearly he was onside. Yeah, he was clearly onside. Yeah. Even Pep Guardiola admitted that City didn't play at their best. They were not playing at their heights. But yeah, Aston Villa were robbed of winning Man City. And like I say, and then people are blaming clubs as a result, saying, oh, Liverpool get away with it, Man City get away with it, Chelsea. But the thing is, it's not those teams. It, it's the corrupt the British... Uh, Referees and officials who need a good kick up the arse. Either they need a kick, a kick up the arse or just uh, replace them. Replace them with uh, referees who are more competent than these uh, old fogies who cannot get behind the, who cannot get away from their bias. Yeah. They can't put the, they can't put the bias aside. Towards professionalism. Professionalism comes first, not your bias. And they just get in the way of it scot free. And the thing that irritates me is that when managers and players call out this, they're the ones who get punished for speaking the truth. Oh, yeah. Why, what, what's wrong with free speech? Is free speech illegal? It might as well be at this rate. But yeah, they're they calling out these uh, problems. And then they're the ones who get into trouble instead of the instead of the knobheads who are causing them, them being the referees and the officials. 
Yeah. I know people just don't want to be professionals anymore. And yeah, yeah, corruption is just killing the game of football. I mean, corruption has always been a thing in football, but since VAR, it 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 it, it, it showed it. I mean, it's reared its ugly head more times than you can imagine. Yeah, corruption is just like multiplied by a thousand. And they need they, these people need to be called out. They have to be called out. They would have to be held accountable, but they never are because they get away. They get away scot free. It's just absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, it was also like that in the Brighton game where, uh, yeah, Alexis uh, McMaster, uh, not McMaster, McAllister. Sorry, he scored a he scored an absolute screamer. Got disallowed, even though it was on side. I know they they batted. Uh, who did the player? Uh, Oh yeah, Leicester, that's right. They, they batted Leicester 5 2. Don't should have been about 8 2 to them. But yet, he had some absolutely dodgy decisions. Again, in the Brentford game, Leeds should have had a penalty, even though uh, they got, even though it was ruled not to have been a penalty, even though one of the Brentford players was tugging on their shirt. Yeah, Leeds, uh, what, what was the score Leeds lost again? It, Five. It was also five two, like uh, Brighton and Leicester. Yeah, they got caught tugging his shirt, and then the Leeds manager Jesse Marsh, he was calling out the, uh, he was calling out to the referee saying, uh, "Hang on, he should have had a penalty." For him being honest, guess what happens? He get he gets sent off. You're getting sent off for speaking the truth. You know, at this rate, football can just go fuck itself. I'm sorry. I mean, I, lo I love football, but at this rate, shitty decisions like that are just absolutely the killing it. In fact, it's, it, it's genocide to football. It really, really is. Yeah. And people say VAR needs scrapping. Uh, VAR doesn't need scrapping. I don't think it does. The people who are behind it need to need to bugger off and get people in who show no bias. They show no who show no bias and show no mercy. Yeah, you gotta show. You you gotta be a neutral in position like that. Not be one of those wankers wearing a Chelsea shirt uh, underneath your your clothing. Yeah. Kind of like Howard Jones. Howard Jones. What him? What is love? Yeah. No, not not Howard Jones. Howard Webb. Sorry. Yeah, he was wearing his Man United kit so, hmm, under his referee clothing whenever whenever they were playing Arsenal and Liverpool. Yeah, but yeah, at least he, he had the balls to say that he was a United fan. But you don't do that. Yeah, the absolute. I know. I've. I don't. In some ways, he could be Man United's greatest ever player. Yeah, yeah. Forget Eric Cantona, Beckham, Ronaldo, and the uh, skulls. It'd be Howard Webb. Yeah, because he he loves Manchester United through and through. But yeah, in, enough for that. Yeah, because. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get myself worked up, and I'm thinking it's not really worth it. It really isn't. Right, I think I shall call this uh, vlog an end. Sorry if it seems a bit all over the place, like it usually is, but I don't know. I just wanted to discuss a few things, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I shall see you in the next one or the next video. So I suggest you take care of yourselves, and I shall see you soon.